Well, it's Sunday. It's about 7 o'clock. I uh, come out earlier, was going to fire the truck up and, uh, you know, kind of do a pre-pre-trip. Fluids are all good, all that good stuff. Went to fire the truck up, was going to spin it around and uh, hook it up to the trailer, just get ready for in the morning so we can get started early. But unfortunately, the truck won't start. Cranks, cranks, cranks. And I think I found the issue um, about a half an hour ago. I had to run to town to get a part. So just to come in here, when I open the door, the key will, it's already in the ignition. Turn the key on. You're supposed to have a wait to start just above that light and there's nothing there. What I ended up finding out was um, going through, checking everything, checking the uh, glow plug relay, going through everything uh, as far as this thing starting. I just drove this truck the other day and no problems whatsoever out of anything. Um, what I came to find out was number 30 fuse. Let me grab my flashlight in here it's somewhere. Find my flashlight real quick. Here it is. Under the dash is your fuse panel. It has this cover on it right here. And number 30 fuse, which goes right there. Okay? That open spot right there where there's no fuse in it. That's where number 30 is. That fuse kept popping, and it's a 30 amp fuse. That fuse kept popping. So if you run into that issue on a 7.3, you come out here, you got to check all your wiring, make sure there's no chafing or anything in your wiring. But number 30 is actually for your fuel bowl heater. And that's where we're at now. We're getting ready to pull the uh, fuel filter out so we can get to it and uh, go ahead and swap it out. Now, I found this on the shelf. This is you know, a diesel fuel heating element. I found this on the shelf at O'Reilly's. It was, I wanna say 55 bucks, roughly. And this is what it is. Get it out of here. It comes with a couple screws to put it back in with, but it's just a heating element with a wire on it that goes inside the fuel uh, filter bowl. So I'll get you guys set up. We'll get it swapped out and uh, make it happen. Okay. So, as you can see, I'm hooded up, everything, it's cold out. Um, we're getting ready to pull the fuel filter. One thing that I did want to say thank you to is uh, Doug. I'm not going to mention his last name. He is a uh, subscriber to my channel. And uh, he sent me a homemade tool for the fuel filters. Uh, it just came in this past week. And uh, I wasn't expecting to get to use it this soon. Uh, it's a pretty simple tool. It's just a socket, which is here, welded to a piece of uh, square stock with two holes drilled into the square, square stock and then a roll pin on each side uh, stuck through the square stock. stock. So we're gonna see how well the tool works. And uh, we'll also, uh, you know, it, it's very simple to make. It's a 9 16 uh, deep well, uh, 3 8 socket that is just welded on, there's the camera, welded on square stock. So that's what it is. Uh, pretty simple, uh, just goes to show that you don't have to um, you know, go out and buy a tool. If you have the stuff laying around, you can actually make it. Uh, this was made by him and uh, sent to me and uh, we're gonna try it out. We're getting ready to try it out right now. So let's get to it. <clears throat> so the way this tool is designed is on the original caps, you have several different holes in here on the cap if uh, if you strip out the top center nut. Uh, what this allows you to do is catch in different areas of that cap, okay? Now the aftermarket caps, they're just a dome cap and then you've just got a socket point on the top. 
try to get away from that. You can pick these caps up pretty cheap at the parts store and they are reusable. So I just stuck it in one of the spots. Oh man, yeah, that's really nice. Um, that tool will be getting uh, used pretty much every time I uh, change the fuel filter. So Doug, uh, if you're listening, thanks man. I much appreciate that. That's, uh, that's a good tool to have just to make it and have it in your toolbox if you have one of these seven threes. So when you take all this stuff off, of course you're gonna have um, you're gonna have uh, fuel spilling everywhere. I'm not really concerned about that too much. And I'll be taking this light and doing different things as I can. Um, there is actually a fuel drain uh, for the bowl. I just opened it up. That'll drain out onto the ground. So if you're doing this on a nice pretty driveway, it's going to get messy. So you got to drain the fuel. Now we'll get the fuel filter out and do some more. Okay. So, once you pull all that apart, that's what you see down in there. There's a screw there and a screw there right on top of that flat plate. Those are actually T20, they're Torx. They're not Phillips head or Allen's, they're T20 Torx. So I'm gonna get you guys set up the best I can as far as being able to see me take this out and uh, get it swapped out. But basically you just take those two bolts out and um, should just be a wire underneath that you unhook. And uh, then you just hook the new wire up and put everything back together. So let's get to it. It's dark out, so I'm going to do the best I can on getting you guys set up. All right, so this here is the two different setups. This is the old one that I just pulled out. This is the new one. You can see a big difference. This one here looked like it just had a heating element that went around and touched a spot here, a spot here, and a spot here, and it has actually popped off of there. Um, as you can see, it's just popped off. Uh, flip it over here, and let's see if I can just get that out of there. So this is actually underneath, and you can see the wire is stripped, uh, and then here's the plug-in right here that just plugs in inside the fuel bowl. Um, this is a pretty easy fix uh, as far as changing one out if you had a problem. So this, this one here is junk. Now this thing actually plugs right here. This is, this is it. This thing that my finger's on, that's that's your uh, electrical connection inside. So if you pop it off and that's unplugged, that's where it goes. So we'll get you set back up and we'll get this thing back together.
This piece does not come out of here at all unless you take the heater out. Once you take that bolt and that bolt off and loosen, you know, take the heater and pop the heater out, this will pop out. This is this is where the centerpiece of your filter goes. So just keep in mind, there is a uh, spring underneath this. So when you put it back together, the spring has to go on, then this, and then you slide the uh, heater over top of it, put it back down, bolt it up. That plug, use finesse. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a bear to get my hand down in there to get it lined up, but we got it done. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the filter back in and see what happens. Next, we're going to go ahead and put another new 30 amp fuse in right there. Okay, that one right there, that's the new 30 amp. Grab the truck keys. <clears throat> we're going to look for a uh, light to come on on the dash for my glow plugs. Wait to start light. And there it is. Wait to start. She's on. This truck will run now, guaranteed. <clears throat> Let the fuel filter fill back up because we drained all the fuel. We'll cycle this again. Now we'll try it. Look at that. That's beautiful. Finally, that's that's what we wanted to see. So I'll get everything buttoned up out here. We'll go in the shop and uh, we'll talk about a couple things. Well, we got the truck running. That's a good sign. I've got a run to do tomorrow and definitely didn't want to cancel out on that run for sure. Uh, kind of already canceled out on one back when the wheel bearing went out and it doesn't look good to you know basically cancel out on run after run after run uh so i use the truck for you know for you guys that are just checking in on this on how to fix you know what could be possibly wrong because this video is actually going to be linked into a couple other things about a 7.3 other than just the hot shotting uh i am a hot shot driver I use a 9973 truck to run my hot shop business and that's what I run. I run the old stuff uh, so my stuff has to be in tip top shape to pass the DOT and you know the T DOT guys uh, so I don't get uh, red tagged. So I, I stay on top of my on top of my equipment pretty well. Um, unfortunately come outside today to do a pre pre trip whatever uh, kick tires, make sure everything's good, make sure I don't see any issues, um, you know, get the trailer hooked up, get the truck fueled up, get it ready for in the morning for when I leave. Uh, the truck's been setting since Thursday. I've done a couple errands with it Thursday and that's it. Um, so it's been setting here. Didn't have any issues Thursday. Come out to start the truck up, whatever, after checking fluids and everything. Go to start the truck up and it cranks and cranks and cranks. No fire, nothing whatsoever didn't hit not one lick first thing i noticed is that the uh, wait to start light or your glow plug light on the dash did not come on at all not for a split second nothing it did not come on so at that time i decided to check the glow plug relay i had power coming in on the hot end of the glow plug relay turn the key on nothing going through there's no click nothing 
Okay, at that point, you would think that it was a glow plug relay. Unfortunately, it's not. Uh, on this particular time, it wasn't it. Um, I didn't change it out to try it. I uh, didn't want to throw money, start throwing money at parts. It's not, not how I like to do things. I uh, started tracking it down. Um, you'd think you'd get a little bit of fire out of the truck, even though the glow plugs weren't working uh, as far as being 40 degrees out, 45 degrees out today. Uh, and I didn't get any of that. So I started looking at the wiring harness, making sure that a mouse didn't get up in there over the weekend and start chewing stuff. Didn't find none of that. At that point, I, I, you know, I checked a couple other things as far as uh, high pressure oil uh, sending unit. Uh, it was fine. Um, you know, checked out some wiring. You know, went through and done those tests, and uh, it came down to two things. Uh, one, the other option that I was going to do was go through and check the fuse box, which is probably what the first thing I should have done was check the fuse box uh, after I decided to check the glow plug relay. But anyway, checked a few other things, then I went to the fuse box under the dash. Uh, the fuse marked number 30 is linked directly to the fuel bowl heater and uh, that fuse was blowed. I pulled the fuse out, put a new one in, turned the key on, it popped right away. That's what determined the fuel bowl heater being bad. Um, ended up going to the parts store, 50 bucks, picked it up at O'Reilly's for 50 bucks. Uh, advance, I called them, they said they had, you know, they could have one in the morning from another store at 85 bucks. So, but O'Reilly's had it. So that's where I went, picked it up. It was cheaper, whatever, and uh, got it installed. Uh, the other issue that it could have been, if it wasn't that number 30 fuse, I was leaning more toward the ECM at that point. Um, Cause I, I have a tune on the truck. Uh, so, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, man, did that tune really, you know, did something happen with the tuner and mess up my ECM or what? So I was kind of leaning toward that, but thank God it wasn't that. Uh, ended up, you know, getting the part, put it on. It's pretty simple. I had about three hours in the whole deal as far as coming out, trying to start the truck up and, you know, diagnosing the issue, going to town, picking up the part, putting it on, cleaning my tools up. I had about three hours in it. So, uh, one thing that we do have, Doug sent me a tool. Doug is a uh, subscriber to my channel and watches my channel, and I appreciate it. Uh, Doug sent me a tool that's a homemade tool. It's just a uh, 3H drive, deep well, 9 16th socket, welded onto a piece of square stock with a couple of roll pins one on each side to take the fuel filters off with. This tool's amazing. Uh, anybody with any kind of welding experience and you have one of these trucks, uh, I highly recommend you know, taking a cheap socket, finding some stuff around the shop and welding this up and making one of these tools. Very simple, uh, very handy. That thing worked well. So that will be in my toolbox for sure. So I do appreciate that, Doug. Doug also sent me a couple shirts. Uh, we'll have one of those on in the next video. You'll see what he sent me, whatever. And another thing, you guys see that back there behind me, that, that's the TO35 Ferguson tractor. And yes, the head is back on it. Uh, that was gonna be this, you know, this video, but unfortunately I'm still waiting on a thermostat and a couple gaskets that are behind on getting here. So anyway, that video is coming up as well as getting it back together. And uh, also, you know, like I said, I am going on a trip. I'll take you guys on that with me as well. And, uh, you know, just glad that it's up and running. Just remember, if you guys want to get in this hot shot game, you know, and, and start you a hot shot business and don't mind working on your stuff and you are mechanically inclined, the older trucks, even though, you know, they break, parts fail, new trucks fail too parts on the new trucks fail. I would rather have an older truck that I know that's gonna get the job done, and if something breaks, parts are readily available on basically any parts store shelf uh, for that old Ford versus a brand new truck. Uh, highly recommend uh, using the old trucks. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one.